This is The Professionals, a podcast by Music Business Technology and Broadcast Media Technology students on Outcast OCCR Owens Community College Radio. In this series, students will interview industry professionals in their respective fields to help gather an idea of what it's like to work in their industry. Hello, my name is Carly Rodalski here from Owens Community College, and today I will be interviewing Mrs. Heidi Feather from Monroe Road Elementary School. Heidi, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? I have been teaching here just over two years. Um, Prior to that, I was at Britton Deerfield Schools for um, 14 years, teaching um, all the way from young fives, like a pre-kindergartners, to 12th grade band in music and jazz band and social emotional learning and film. A lot of of random classes thrown into me, but now I'm just um, young fives through fifth grade, just elementary music. I'm going to ask you a few questions about why you decided to pursue a career in the music industry, why you became a music education teacher. When did you first realize you wanted to pursue a music career, and what growing up, or who and or what inspired you to do what you do today? I was 16. I was in the high school band, and I did not want to be in the band anymore, and I decided that I was going to be a water girl for the football team. So when, when my band director saw that I was not on the uh, roster, he pulled me aside and said, well, I, I, I think you're kind of making a mistake. I think, you know, you could really do a lot with music. So then I, I stayed in band, and I became the drum major in my junior and senior year of high school. And prior to that, I thought I was going to be a lawyer when I grew up. So um, I needed to take some more difficult classes to be able to uh, start that. I'm very glad I stayed in the band and stayed in the music program. Um, but he definitely inspired me. He was um, he can actually retire next year. So he's, he's been a big mentor for me growing up in music and, um, and now being a music teacher. Were there any pop influences, like your favorite singer or favorite bands growing up, that influenced you as well, or is it just... There was actually, I, so I took piano lessons since I was seven years old, and my mom took me when I was in high school to a piano concert, a David Lawrence piano concert at the Stranahan. I had a lot of his books, and I played a lot of his music, and I really liked the music that he wrote. And then I got to see him, and he got to sign one of my books, and that was, like, huge. I was like, you can make a career out of music. Like, this is so cool. I can be a piano player and do things with that. How did you get your degree and explain where you studied, how long it took, and some highlights about your process getting there? When I was in high school, I took post-secondary classes at University of Toledo. So I had a couple of those classes out of the way, and one of the classes I took was applied lessons. So I started taking piano lessons down there, along with the piano lessons I was taking back home my senior year, and that really kind of jump-started, hey, you know, I want to go to school here. I, I would like to get a degree here. So when I graduated high school, I went to UT, and it took me three and a half years to get my undergrad degree. So I did it quicker than normal. I took a lot of classes in the summer. A lot of my colleagues, it took like four and a half or five years. But I had a boyfriend who was a couple years older, and he told me he's not going to say the M word, marriage, until I graduate. So I was jump starting, you know, trying to do all that. And the day that I graduated, he proposed. So then I taught for a year at Britain Deerfield and then went to Bowling Green in the summers for two or three summers after that and did full classes in the summers and got my master's right away. Was that Britain Deerfield job teaching the first music job you had? It was, and I stayed there for 14 years. What instruments do you play, and what is your main specification of teaching? What instrument, or do you prefer vocal teaching? I went to college for instrumental music ed, and then uh, master's was just master's of music. But I grew up playing the piano, and then in middle school, high school, I played the flute and the piccolo as well. But then in college, they they teach you how to play all the instruments. But since um, teaching band for so many years, I ended up, I bought a flute, a clarinet, a saxophone, a trombone, and a baritone, and I own a ukulele, two ukuleles, and a guitar. So I have all those in my classroom now. I play them for kids all the time because being so instrumental-based for so many years, that's kind of, I I guess I prefer to teach that way. I think it's more fun. And and in this classroom, I mean, my classroom is awesome. It's got tons of xylophones and drums and and lots of really cool instruments. So I, I do keep it very instrumental focused, I think, just because that's what I was raised with. Which would you say the hardest instrument was? Ooh, gosh. Probably the violin. <laughs> I don't own any string instruments besides the ukulele and, uh, and guitar. Your current job, where and when you started, how it's going, 
and why you decided to teach the grade levels you do. Oh, that's a good question. I was actually always terrified of teaching just solely elementary music because my elementary teacher was very vocal. Everything was, you come in, you sit in chairs or stand on risers, and you just sing songs. There was not really much dancing. There was not any instruments besides recorders. And I guess in my mind, I just thought, okay, well, elementary music is vocal, and I'm not a vocal person. So I just stuck to band in that for so many years. So then when this job opened up, I was like, man, that would really work out. Like, I have three small children at home, and the band stuff became a lot, like, after hours and on the weekends. I like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. And, you know, walked in the music room, and it was full of instruments. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I felt home. Like, this is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> and they're very supportive of that here. Like, anytime a teacher or, or principal or anybody walks in, I mean, the kids are, like, playing instruments or moving around and dancing. And it's just um, different than what I thought elementary music would be. What is the toughest part about your job? We have a, a lot of very developmentally delayed and emotionally handicapped students. From our ISD this year, they moved all those students into my building instead of being spread out over the three elementaries. And many of them don't have AIDS yet. There's a bunch of openings for AIDS and they have not filled them yet. So lots of big breakdowns screaming and crying and won't leave the room when their class is supposed to leave the room. And so a lot of our professional development is how to handle those situations. So, I mean, the school is definitely trying to make it easier on us, but that is still definitely the most difficult part. It's not something that I'm doing or that other students are doing. It's just something inside their brain that is preventing them, like all of their needs are not being met. That sounds very, very difficult situation to handle. Do you have any other music jobs other than teaching at Monroe Elementary School? I'm uh, just teaching piano lessons. And how is that going? Good. Do you enjoy that more than your teaching job at school? I enjoy the one-on-one, but if I had to pick, I like whole classes and everybody up and moving. And <laughs> okay. I organize chaos, I suppose. <laughs> what inspires you the most? When kids walk into my room and want to give me like a high five or they say, Mrs. Feather, I wear my music shirt today. They get excited to come to my class and that it makes me very, very excited. Or when I see him in the hallway, Mrs. Feather, I have your class today. What are we going to do in music class? That, that, just, that always makes me smile. <laughs> what accomplishments have you achieved? And if there's any performances, certificates, just anything you're proud of that you would like to mention? Last year, after my first like full year here, I got a PCO Excellence Award for Specials Educator of the Year. So I was really excited about that because it's like, oh, this is cool. I'm, I'm new here. I got to perform at the Stranahan, oh, the big manor house that's at Wildwood Metro Park. I got to perform there in December. I get to play Christmas music. And they have a beautiful grand piano in, like, the atrium area. And that was really cool. They said it was the busiest night, a thousand people walking through that room. And I thought it was really cool that I get to perform for that many people. What is your main goal and what do you want to get out of teaching? Lifelong learners of music. They said last year, after I had been here a year, they had the most kids signed up for middle school music than they had in, like, the previous 10 years. So they were very excited because coming off of COVID, it was kind of hard for them to get kids back interested in joining an ensemble in the middle school. When my fifth graders leave, I I want them to be like, you know, we found each other, play all those instruments. We want to do that. So would you say that your main goal is inspire more to learn, or would it be to teach as many as you can? I would say inspire kids to continue wanting to learn music. Like inspire them to want to keep doing music. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Carly Rodolski, and that was Mrs. Heidi Feather from Monroe Road Elementary School. This has been the Professionals Podcast by Music Business Technology and Broadcast Media Technology students. Join us next time on Outcast OCCR Owens Community College Radio.